Well, good morning, everybody. This morning, you find us out in the park trying to get a little bit of exercise and keep our sanity. And I know with this week's announcement, you probably found it a little bit difficult. We look like we'll be locked down for three weeks and the rumours are that it'll be even longer after that. So I just want to encourage you when it comes to your mental health. Um, we are in the office, well, sorry, where the pastors are not in the office, but we are keeping our email open in the office. So if you'd like to speak with somebody just to share some frustrations, share some anxieties or whatever, um, just send an email to the office. We're not met there to man the phones, but we're manning the email. So send um, a note to the office and one of the pastors will ring you, myself or Caleb, or uh, if you'd like one of the ladies to ring you, they can do that as well. Um, we all need to sit and chat and uh, we all need someone we can sometimes just dump a little bit on and um, I'm here at the moment with a friend of mine this is Dr John G'day. Dr John is the president of the Christian, Christian Councils Association of Australia and even he needs to talk to a pastoral carer so uh, you know we get out and we have our walk and we have our talk and so if you're in that situation there are, you know, you can ring us at the church. If you feel uncomfortable ringing a pastor, then you can contact uh, Light FM's care line, and the number will be up on the screen there. And they also will pray with you. They will encourage you. Uh, they will offer you some pastoral care over that telephone. Uh, if you don't want that, you've got Lifeline as well, 13 11 14, uh, or even Beyond Blue if you feel that. You need extra help there. 1300 So uh, please avail yourself of that. Also, the church is also there if you're shut in, you don't want to go out and get groceries or pick up the items from the pharmacy. Uh, let us know and we can arrange for that to be done for you as well. We are allowed to be in the activity of caregiving. So uh, let us know if you need help. Don't sit at home and try and tough it out on your own. As I was reading uh, this week, I came across a verse that I've known and loved for ages, Psalm 24, just verse 1. And it says, The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. Or, and it reminded me straight away of a song that we used to sing way back in the 80s by Graham Kendrick. Uh, the earth is the Lord's and everything in it. And it's just, it just made me realise again thinking about that text and that song how much God is sovereign over all this that's happening we look around us and see us see the pandemic see devastation uh, but yet God is in control the earth is the Lord's here's a little reminder of what that song sounded like thought is very relevant to us today because it's also Father's Day and God as a good father doesn't give to his children bad gifts the scripture tells us that he loves us he cares for us and this world this earth that he's given us is a very good gift and even with COVID uh, rampant as it is uh, there are still blessings there is still God's presence there is still God's joy and God's strength in all of that and uh, I just want you to meditate on that verse this week. If that's all you read, if that's all you think about, then just remind yourself that the earth is the Lord's and everything in it, which includes you, 
You matter to God. Here's something to remind us of that fact. To the broken and to the hurting, to the desperate and to the defeated, to the common, the average, the plain and the small, I want you to know you matter to God. To the washed up and the worn out, to the helpless and the hopeless, to the cast outs, the dropouts, the last picks and hypocrites, to the unimpressive and the underwhelming, to the nobodies and has-beens, to people just like me, you matter to God. You are not defined by your worst days or your biggest mistakes. And you are not the sum total of all your setbacks, slip-ups, failures, and faults. Because who you are is not determined by what you have, where you've been, or what you've done, but who Jesus declares you to be. You matter to God. Maybe at some point somebody told you something that simply wasn't true. That you're nothing but unworthy, unwanted, and unloved. But I want the loudest voice in your ear to be the voice that breaks the cedars and shakes the wilderness. And he says, you matter to me. Before the galaxies were born, or the first star gave light, before the ocean waves crashed or the night sky cracked with thunder, before any creature crawled or any bird sang, before the planets were set in motion, he set in motion the plan of your salvation. From the highest heights of heaven, the Lord of all creation looked upon your desperation. He became like one of us to remake all of us, to make an orphan his child, to make a rebel his friend, to set the prisoner free. You matter to God. So to all the sons and daughters of God, to all my brothers and sisters in Christ, behold his power and glory and majesty. Behold the one who matters most. Right, you matter to God because you matter to God. And because this week is normally our church prayer week, I'm just gonna pray for you briefly pray for some, some of those immediate needs and just encourage you to keep praying for others in the congregation that you may be aware of as well. So Father God, I just pray for our church community. I pray that you'd give us the strength and the comfort through this difficult time of separation from our friends, from our family. Lord, that uh, you would sustain us in this difficult time for those who may be sick or unwell even if it's just hay fever or a normal cold uh, lord that you would encourage us through that so lord we just pray for our church community and all of those of our friends and our families linked to that community through us lord i pray for our state leaders too that you, as they grapple with uh, a change of direction a change of philosophy in dealing with this pandemic lord i pray that you would give them wisdom and that you would lead them and guide them and that they would be open to your leading. Uh, Lord, they might want to take all the credit and glory for themselves, but Lord, I pray that you would uh, actually inspire them with a solution for all of us in this situation. Lord, I just pray for those who are in hospital, whether it's COVID or an unre unrelated affliction. Lord, we think of Larry, who has been in hospital this week, may still be there after the birth of her son. Lord, I just pray that you would be there with her. For others who may be unwell in our congregation uh, and just spending time in hospital, uh, Lord, I just pray for them, that you would encourage them at this time. So, Lord, we just lift all of our needs. You know what they are much more than we do. And for other things that I haven't mentioned, Lord, I just lift them into your hands and pray that you would undertake your care, your concern, in all of your love and mercy and compassion in all of those areas. Thank you, Lord. Just a few notices before we move on. Uh, Alpha is on Monday nights on Zoom, so you can join that. Again, just send a note to the office at edgechurch.com.au and uh, Caleb will get back in contact with you with the details. Um, the newsletter is also goes out every Friday afternoon electronically, so if you're not getting that, just send again your email address to the office and you'll be added to the list. And also our online giving, the banks haven't closed down and our expenses haven't gone away. So if you uh, are able to continue to give your tithes and offerings through online giving, that would help us a lot. 
Uh, also, as I reminded you, if you do need any help with shopping or pharmacy needs or anything like that, please contact uh, the office and we'll help there as possible. And because it's Father's Day and you're probably not able to be with fathers at this time, just ask you to reflect on God as your father. Uh, he's a good father. We couldn't have that song, Good Good Father, because it was copyright restricted and I couldn't play it for you. But I've got a song by Steph McLeod uh, from Celtic Worship that we've had before, a song called O oh Perfect Father, and it's his heart cry to God as Father. So please enjoy that before we get into our service, and Ash will be encouraging us with his sermon uh, later on. God bless you.
Hello everyone. A good friend of mine has just become a dad. Uh, he planned it beautifully to have had a baby just a week and a half ago. And so he get to score some amazing present this Father's Day. On the other side, I have some friends, Sean and Alison, who have just announced that they're going to have their fifth child. And Sean wasn't content with four cards and four pairs of socks. I'm sure that's the reason. Whether today is your first Father's Day or whether you're a seasoned veteran, it can be and it should be a special day. I do recognise that for many people, it is hard. People remember those fathers that have passed on or, uh, or even experienced sadness because fatherhood was not something that they have had or can have. So wherever you're at today, I hope that God is able to use my words to encourage you in some way. Let me pray. Lord God, just uh, as we uh, look at your word this morning, as we celebrate dads, I ask that you speak through me, use my words to speak to the hearts of everyone listening. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Training a dog is a long-term responsibility. And soon after we got married, we thought oh, it would be good to have a practice child before we went and got the real thing. <laughs> so we made a purchase of a poodle cross with a Shih Tzu. And his name was Chester. Now some of you <laughs> will remember Chester. We were a family of three. And we quickly learned that raising a dog in today's society was a massive, responsibility and a cost. Apart from the food, the collar, the outfits, the medical expenses, well, you know, did you know that a grass seed, if it is stuck under the skin of your animal, can cost you over a thousand dollars to get it removed? We loved our dog. And paying these costs, hey, they were worth it. Next came puppy school. And we were proud parents of our pooch. And he finished top of his class. <laughs> and once a, a wise instructor told us that a pup needs experiences in order to become socialized, loyal, and, and an intelligent adult dog. So we took him on adventures. We took him to, he looked, he, I mean, he loved carols by candlelight. 
He loved visiting churches and having uh, play dates with friends, going to the park and having swims in the Yarra River, eating our leftovers, going on camping trips, sleeping on our bed. He even went on holidays with us and we took him for a drive and a, and a camping trip down the great ocean road. And we even took him on a plane to Tasmania. Now I do remember very clearly sitting there in that cabin, hearing this barking, thinking, oh no, that's Chester in the cargo bay. Chester, hmm, had problems. It definitely was not all rosy. He suffered from anxiety and some sort of separation disorder, which meant he hated us leaving the house and especially leaving him alone. His retaliation was that he would destroy things, from shoes to furniture to clothes to whatever he could find. He would wee and pee in the wrong places just to spite us. If visitors came over, he would wee on the floor because of his excitement. And we had to convince people just to ignore him for a while until he settles down. I remember waking up in bed to Chester jumping onto the bed with excitement and starting to wee everywhere. I remember my reaction was one that uh, I was not that proud of. It maybe felt like a bit of a failure as a dad. One day, we came home to our lounge room being full of snow. Our two bean bags had been destroyed and small polystyrene balls covered the floor. We started to develop strategies to best parent our problem child while giving the impression to the world that things were all great. Inside, we were struggling. We, we read books and we bought him new things to entertain him. This did not work. We believed he had a demon inside him and things were tough. Kate got new glasses and within a few days, Chester had found them and destroyed them. One day, we bought this new Bible and we were very excited to get a copy of the Message Bible and brought it home and when we went out the next time we'd actually left it open on the kitchen table and uh, when we came home we discovered that Chester had got up on the kitchen table and kindly weed on just the Bible and to this day 20 years later this Bible still does not close properly and a number of pages are still wrinkled and stained and a little bit smelly. Chester had problems. So he became an outside dog. He hated this and he would discover ways to be able to escape. And we, he would enjoy waiting at our front door when we came home when we'd been out. So we got smart and we set up a camera and we thought we'd watch him and see exactly what he's doing. We discovered him up on the barbecue, licking the barbecue. I'm sorry to anybody who came and had a barbecue at our house. And then we watched him go behind a shrub and disappear. Hmm. So the next day we went out and we had a look behind the shrub and uh, Sure enough, there was a panel on the fence that was loose and he'd pushed his way through, but then it sprung back in. Now our house was one that had a lane behind it. And so in order for Chester to get back in, he had to go back through that wood paling or go right around the block and come to our front door. But every time we'd come home from wherever we'd been, there he was at the front door waiting for us. We didn't know what to do. We don't know what he did with his freedom when he was out there. We didn't know what to do to be able to cope with him. 
and we thought the best option was to get a second dog. We hoped that the new baby in the house would bring a balance to the force. Anyway, to cut a long story short, when our real baby boy came into the world, we actually couldn't trust Chester. We didn't know if he'd be jealous and maybe retaliate. So we found a new home for him. Two police officers who were good with discipline and loved to run and keep fit. We're very excited to take him on. Today, we actually have three real children, two border collies, one cat, nine chickens, three alpacas, and a newly adopted ram called Mark. Now, my father named him Mark because he walks around going, Mark, everywhere he goes. I've often reflected on how Chester turned out and looked for somewhere, I guess, to pass the blame. Was it the way we treated him? Did, did we spoil him too much? Did, did we leave him home by himself too much? Did we not discipline him enough? And I wonder if Chester could sit here with us today or, or whether he could write a, uh, a Father's Day card to me. What would he communicate? Would he honor me for trying to do my best? Would he have positive words to say about the amazing experiences that we gave him and that we had together? Would he want to show appreciation for the love that we had in our household? Or would he just focus on the negative things? Would he focus on the, on the fact that we abandoned him? Would he blame me for the problems in his life, for the issues that he had? See, we live in, in a world that is good at passing on the blame. I mean, it started in the beginning. It started in the garden, in the Garden of Eden. You remember? Oh, it was the snake. Oh, it was the woman. It was the woman that you gave us, God. It continued throughout the Bible and through time. And here we are today in a situation that is outside of our control. And we look for someone to blame. Oh, COVID, it's Dan's fault. <laughs> He's the one that put us in this. Or we say, oh, why is God allowing this? Why is God allowing COVID to continue? Why doesn't he just stop it? We look to pass the blame. See, blame can be an excuse for not getting on with our life. When things are outside of our control, we can feel out of control, so we look to pass the blame. We give in and we grumble. We complain on social media. We look for anyone or anything other than ourselves to blame. Today is Father's Day. We men are thanked and praised for our role in raising our children, or maybe our practice children. And we're meant to honor our fathers on Father's Day. Honoring our fathers doesn't mean choosing to blame them for everything that went wrong or is going wrong in our lives. And it doesn't mean lying to them and hiding the issues that might be there because of something that happened in the past. But it does mean choosing to be the best version of yourself that you can be with the cards that you've been dealt. See, I heard this great motivational speaker earlier this year share with her about how many people look at his life and they wonder how does he cope with the hand that he's been dealt? He has cancer, he has illness after illness. And his response was, if I have been dealt cards, I am still in the game. If I have been dealt cards, I'm still in the game. Each day is a new day. 
And while I still have cards in my hand, I still have an opportunity. I still have hope. I still can be a positive influence in this world. I can choose to live this new day the way I want to live it and not look at blaming someone else for dealing me a poor hand. Now I'm not telling you that you have to pretend that things haven't happened in the past that have scarred you. Honour isn't lying about the past. Honour is looking down at the cards that you have and saying, no matter how bad they are, I still have cards in my hand. And I will live each day honouring my Heavenly Father with all that I am. This too actually brings honour to our earthly fathers. Paul and Silas were guys who were serving Jesus by sharing their faith and healing people in Jesus' name. They got lots of people annoyed at times and one particular time was because that they had healed someone who was a form of income to some very wicked men. And so they were dragged in front or before a magistrate. Let's read in Acts chapter 16. It says this, And the crowd stood, uh, joined in the attack against Paul and Silas, and the magistrates ordered them to be stripped and beaten with rods. And after they had been severely flogged, they were then thrown into prison and the jailer was commanded to guard them carefully. When he received these orders, he put them in the inner cell and fastened their feet in the stocks. See, at this moment, their new cards that they'd just been dealt did not look good. Most people would have felt cheated and disappointed and they would have looked to pass the blame. But most likely, most likely that blame would have been to God for not protecting them. But Paul, but not Paul and Silas. About midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God and the other prisoners were listening to them. See, no blame, just worship. They were giving worship and honour to their Heavenly Father, not blaming Him for the current predicament. And God honours them back and sets them free. Whatever our par parents did or didn't do for us in our lives, we can appreciate that they gave us life. Many of them helped sustain us and gave us the best they could with what they knew or had the capacity to give. It's good to acknowledge that no dad is perfect, except for our Heavenly Father. We all, we all have issues. And we need to give up the urge to stand in judgment. And if there is any vengeance that needs to happen, we need to leave that at the throne of whom, of whose throne is actually made of justice and righteousness. The truth is that the quality of our life depends on you honoring your father and mother. And maybe that's why it's one of the Ten Commandments. What is normal is established in our brain by the time we turn eight. You may think that you were um, brought up, well, how the way you were brought up is normal, and everyone does. And so do I, that's the way I think. And so does your spouse, and so does your neighbor. So when we're confronted with someone whose normal is different than ours, we think they're weird. And maybe they think we're weird as well. And this can cause conflict and this can cause issues. But it is in your power to change your family tree, you know, from this day going forward. If you're in your family, you need to have a conversation and say that there are things in our lives that 
we have actually made normal, which are not healthy and not honouring to our Father in heaven. We need to change those things. Maybe in your house you've created a, um, a culture that um, is good at passing the blame. Today you need to make, make a decision to be grateful for what you have rather than complaining and grumbling. You can be the one in your family that starts that change. The importance of gratitude is huge. Being grateful and, and showing gratitude to, in each day for all that you have does wonders to your mental health. And we need that at this time. And Father's Day is that reminder to be grateful. For if you genuinely can find things that you can say thank you to your dad for today, then do it. Be grateful. If it's a bit harder, stop. And thank God for your life. And that your earthly father brought you into this world. Even if they made mistakes that um, you are here today. And you're still in the game. And you still have a hope for a future. What did Paul and Silas do? When, they, when things were out of control for them and they had every right to complain and blame God, they turned to the one who is in control. Worship set them free. They turned to the one who kept them free. They didn't blame him. They didn't blame him and say, it's all your fault because that would have kept them in prison. They chose worship instead of complaint. So dads, what are we meant to do? Model gratitude over grumbling. And what about in this world of uncertainty where um, we're struggling and things are out of control? There's too much that we can't control, but there is so much that we can control and influence for good. Let's focus on that. This might be, unfortunately, the new normal. So it comes down to the decisions that we make every day. As our kids are watching, we need to show them the right way. When Jesus with his disciples up a mountain, there was an incident that, that confused them. And Jesus had this, this supernatural moment with more than just one other heavenly being was with him. And a voice from heaven spoke. And in their confusion, the disciples, they fell to their knees. And they didn't know what to do. But then Jesus came and met them there. And let's read that in verse 7. In Matthew it says, But Jesus came and touched them. Get up, he said, and don't be afraid. This idea applies to all today. When we're feeling stuck, when, when things are feeling tough or, or confusing, get up and know that Jesus is with us. We do not need to be afraid. We can face whatever challenge is ahead. And when dads do this, our kids get inspired and have less fear and anxiety and, and, and anxiety. The most important thing that dads can do for their kids is highlighted in a simple story that took place in the book of Mark. Jairus, a temple leader, seeks out Jesus to come and to help his daughter. Unfortunately, she dies, but Jesus raises her back to life. Here we have a father who realizes that the most important thing that he can do for his child is to connect her with Jesus. And he will do whatever it takes to make that possible. Even if it means humbling himself and going against what his peers believe about Jesus. See, this is it. Connect your children with their good, good father, their heavenly father. 
Introduce them to Jesus. That's the most important thing for you to do as a dad. Now dads, the reality is, the best way that you're going to introduce them to Jesus is not by preaching to them. It's not by complaining about issues in this world or complaining about the cards that you've been dealt. But it's by living Him out in front of them. If your words are not matching your actions, it will not help. You can't become more like Jesus yourself if you're not actually spending time with Jesus. Start there. And when you get it wrong, show humility, apologize, seek forgiveness. Just try again. Don't give up. Don't give in. But get up and don't be afraid. And keep trying. Keep moving forward. We're still in the game. We've still got cards in our hands. Choose worship over complaint. Gratitude over blame. Freedom over prison. Then I believe our kids will look back at, at your life, at my life, and, and they will be grateful for it. And they will be proud of the man that we have become and what we did for them. Let us honour our fathers by being the best version of ourselves that we can be. I know Chester, you know, he's no longer with us and I've got other <laughs> children here today. But he helped me be more patient, a more patient dad, as you probably see <laughs> through this message. And you know what? I'm grateful for his crazy life. Let me pray. Lord God, we're not perfect by any means. And as dads, we've failed many times to be the best father for our children. Please help us to be better men. Help us to, do whatever, to go to whatever length to connect our children with you. Help us to love them unconditionally, to forgive them, and humbly seek forgiveness when it's required. Bless us, Lord, to be the best fathers that we can be, ones that our kids are proud of, but ultimately ones that you, Lord, are proud of. Lord, you are perfect in all your ways. You are a good, good father. And remind us that we are still in the game and we still have cards in our hand. Help us to show, to choose gratitude and worship over blame. We love you heaps. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Thanks for listening today. God bless you. Have a wonderful week. Happy Father's Day. Okay, dads, let's go ahead and get started, guys. Now, some of you have already let me know how uncomfortable you were in last week's meeting. So tonight, we're going to try to respect each other's boundaries. What? Tonight we've also got a guest with us, David. And would you like to introduce yourself? Yeah. Um, hey guys, I'm David. David. Hey. Up, David. Hey. How many kids do you have, David? None. At least not at the moment. Uh, my wife is pregnant, and uh, she should be delivering any day now. Mm, that's great. So Super. Oh, great. Awesome. Who'd like to go first? Anyone. Anyone. I'll go. Perfect. Todd, yes. My daughter and I went to the mall, and she said she wanted to take the stairs to the second level. And I said, I don't trust stairs, because they're always up to something. <laughs> Todd, I'm sorry that happened. Okay. Yeah. I encourage you to try to resist the urge to make jokes like that. Yeah. My turn? Okay. Can I go? Okay. Yesterday, actually, my daughter got home, and she asked me how my day was. And I said, well, a guy tried to sell me a coffin, but that's the last thing I need. Oh, Jerry, oh, Jerry that Jerry. joke is dead on arrival. Because it's the last thing I need. David, <laughs> how about you? Oh, I, I didn't, I didn't say this. This is a safe zone. Just jump on in. Yeah, I, I'm, I guess I'm just scared of being a dad. I'm afraid I'm gonna start telling bad jokes just like my dad. Well, it might be in our nature. We can fight against it. 
Hey, speaking of nature, I tried to catch some fog yesterday. I missed. <laughs> M-I-S-T. Oh, yeah. You're a monster. I, this is where the boundary is. I'm done. This is where you are. Hello? Really? Okay, yeah, no. Uh, yeah, I'll be right there. That was Julie. Her water just broke. I guess the baby finally ran out of womb. <laughs> I'm gonna be a dad. Don't you think you should be going? Oh, yeah. So I told my wife she drew her eyebrows too high. She seemed surprised. Oh.